Much like 2013 being deemed the Year of Luigi, commemorating 30 years since his very first appearance, Nintendo has now officially and hilariously named October the month of Luigi. It's fitting, as his claim to fame, what really turned Green Mario into the better brother, is a starring role in a horror parody game of his own. I said his own horror parody game, not horrific parody of itself, Luigi's Mansion. So, to pair with the third installment releasing on the spookiest day of the year, let's dust off a classic and see where the journey of our hesitant hero began, with dark aspects of Luigi's Mansion. The premise is that Mario turns up missing, again. After investigating a mansion the two supposedly won from a contest they never entered. So Luigi, now armed with a souped up shop vac gifted by a fellow ghost hunter, has to finish the job and find his brother, lighting up these haunted halls one room at a time. This is Nintendo's take on the horror genre, and as such, we're looking at a more comical, fun definition of scary, where much of the adventure is played for laughs rather than shock. At the very least though, I think it's agreed upon that this game does maintain an even eeriness throughout. It excels in atmosphere and manages to be genuinely creepy at times, which is the focus of today. Much of that ominous vibe comes from what is probably the game's greatest strength, its sound design. I'm sure anyone who's played for any amount of time really can recall Luigi calling out to his missing brother, Mario! or humming along to the background music. The game utilizing separate tracks the lower his heart points run. At mid-range, his voice changes from semi-confident to shaky and cautious. <laughs> Any lower, and the man sounds like he's about to faint. His voice trembles and whimpers completely off pitch. This is played with further as the ghosts, too, in any uncleared room will creepily moan along as if to taunt you. I really notice this when playing with headphones, and it contributes a lot to the experience. These lesser spirits that occupy each floor are silly in design. The in-universe reason for that, though, is because they're actually creations of the powerful portrait ghost Vincent Van Gogh, also known as Pablo Sai Caso in the Spanish version, which is awesome. They have two ways of being cleared out. The first, more standard method is vacuuming via Poltergust 3000, but an additional way is continuously spraying an element, ice, fire, or water, onto a ghost that hosts an affinity for the opposite. That causes them to dissipate, which I always found a little unsettling. You can destroy their essence. Those are only the minions though, it's recapturing these human-esque ghosts, freed from their portrait prisons by King Boo, now taking occupants in the mansion that work as the other main objective to finding Mario. But where did they all come from, and are they also art pieces brought to being like their lesser lackeys? No, it's heavily implied that these are indeed the spirits of deceased people, captured and turned into paintings later by E. Gad, with the instruction manual outright stating this to be the case. Further support is seen in human photographs to the likeness of certain ghosts, displayed in their respective rooms, with biographies detailing life before their afterlife. In a couple of rather grim cases, we're even told how they died. The darkest bio in the game is that of Sue P, a seven-year-old girl who passed away in her sleep. As described, what was supposed to be a short nap turned into an eternal slumber. This poor girl is one of only two portrait ghosts with an explicit cause of death, the other being Lugs the Glutton, having eaten himself to death and still left unsatisfied though the idea or seed was planted, so it's interesting to imagine how the others could have perished. 
A most interesting talking point is this family of five, a father, mother, baby, and twin boys residing in the first area. Since child deaths clearly aren't off the table, what horrible accident had to have occurred for this entire household to all wind up as ghosts together? The idea of a ghost baby is a sad enough sentiment too. There is a picture suggesting Chauncey, like the others, was once living and therefore had to have died. Perhaps Nintendo realized or thought that killing babies was too far, so they covered it up with his bio. Chauncey was born a ghost? Unfortunately, that's a pretty big contradiction, and where a lot of the confusion on what these portrait ghosts are supposed to be stems from. What is the purpose of this? Are the photos simply a product of illusion from King Boo, like the mansion itself? To make everything appear history, and as a result, scarier for Luigi? Nonetheless, to be born a ghost has tragic implications in and of itself, which is a likely unintended result from their censoring. Being born a ghost could rather morbidly be construed as a stillbirth or miscarriage. But whatever you believe, it's still a dark aspect for simply being a topic of discussion in the first place. And even when dismissing all this speculation, Chauncey as a boss character is quite frightening in general. He first makes a presence by laughing while dropping the foyer chandelier on Luigi, and is introduced with the camera panning towards the nursery to the eerie sound of the toy box following the capture of his mother. This demon baby is built up to host powers unlike anything else in the game apparently surpassing his older brothers and surprising his parents. We see the extent of his ability during the actual fight, where he shrinks Luigi down to fit well inside of his crib, letting out a few nightmare cries before attempting to flatten him by rocking horse. On par with intimidating bosses, but moving away from paranormal infancy is Bogmire, the cemetery shadow as the Area 2 boss. He's one of a few portrait ghosts in this game that clearly isn't human, with its casted shadow resembling that of a gravestone. But what exactly is it supposed to be? The purple penumbra looks more monstrous than anything, and based on its name, an amalgamation of bog and quagmire, I'd guess it was birthed from the bottomland. But physical attributes aside, this creature from the Black Lagoon actually has a bit of lore attached to it, a bio hinting at how it came to be. According to Mr. Swamp's description, Bogmire is a product of the very mansion you're exploring, specifically the fear and despair within, a manifestation of hopelessness, which is a pretty terrifying thought. The line that follows, he's not sure who to fear or what to despair these days, is made to be funny, perhaps to lessen the existential horror, but a spirit born from intense emotion it doesn't know what to do with is kind of melancholy in its own right. His heart can't even be scanned with the Game Boy horror like the other ghosts, so Gad knows what this thing is feeling. Jimmy, Jimmy. <laughs> 